Hey everybody, Catsymph TV, and this is part two of our detailed look at the Elka X from Cherry Audio, a recreation of the legendary and elusive Elka Synthex synthesizer. If you haven't yet seen part one, we recommend checking that out first. Link is included above and in the description below. And as always, please do consider supporting our efforts via Patreon or Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. Okay, so we're going to start with a typical analog patch we created. Yeah, that's a pretty typical analog synth sound. Right now we are in the default polyphonic mode, but we can change it to be monophonic. Even as I held down multiple keys, only the last one sounded. There is also a unison mode, which stacks all the available voices on a single note. The real fun with unison mode comes when we use the detune function. The oscillators are all slightly out of tune with each other, resulting in a lovely, thick sound. <laughs> Okay, enough of that mashugana. Let's take a look at the effects section. There are three effects, chorus, echo, and reverb. Let's start with the chorus. It has three modes with different intensities. Let's start with mode one. Mode two. is quite intense. Let's go back to mode 2, which I really like. The echo also has three different modes, along with parameters for each. Let's start with the standard delay. We can also sync the delay to the clock tempo. Let's set it to an eighth note. Now the tape delay mode. I really like tape delay. Let's crank up the effects level. It's also fun to crank up the feedback on tape delay. And finally, the ping pong delay, which alternates taps between left and right channels. It is best to listen to this with good stereo separation.
The reverb section has several different algorithms for different reverb styles and parameters for delay, EQ, and level. Let's explore each of them now. The GLTC, or Galactic Mode, is my favorite. Let's bring back in the tape delay for an extra lush sound. Okay, let's switch back to our typical analog patch and turn our attention to the keyboard section. Here we can set the number of voices, let's bump that up to 16, as well as different keyboard modes. The default single layer, two simultaneous layers, or split keyboard. Now before we continue, let's review the voice architecture of the Elka X. It has two separate layers. Each layer has its own voice parameters, which includes the oscillators and noise, filters, envelope, LFO, and effects. These are all then mixed into the master output. Note that LFO2 is global and affects both the upper and lower layers. Now that we have that squared away, let's look at the double mode, which stacks the upper and lower layers across the keyboard. We are currently hearing both layers. By default, we are viewing the upper layer on the panel, but we can switch between upper and lower layers with these buttons. We can also solo the selected layer, which is useful for sound editing. Solo the upper layer to hear our original preset. And now solo the lower layer. These are the default voice settings, which we will now edit. We can use the lower layer to create a transient sound to give the upper layer sound a stronger attack. A little more of that oomph. Add in the noise generator. Shape it with the filter and envelope. Turn down the volume on the main oscillators and use cross modulation to make them noisier. That's a nice little transient sound. Let's turn off solo to hear what it sounds like in context. Maybe switch back to white noise. Yeah, now we have our analog sound with a more aggressive attack. As mentioned earlier, the effects are specific to each layer, so we can set some effects on the upper layer while leaving our transient sound dry in the lower layer. Solo the upper layer and we hear the effects. Solo lower and it's dry. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, I got a little distracted there playing that vamp. Let's save this patch and get back to our discussion of keyboard layers. We can use the split mode to play each of the layers on separate parts of the keyboard. We can use this control to change the split point. Split mode lets us do things like put a soft pad on the upper half of the keyboard and a squelchy bass on the lower half. Let's move back to the default preset. Set split mode and solo out layer 1. Now let's build our pad sound with triangle waves and filter envelope. Adding chorus level 3 for an ethereal sound. And a bit of tape delay. Nice. Now let's turn our attention to the bass. Solo out layer 2. Use sawtooth, resonance, and filter envelope to get a squelchy bass. I guess that's squelchy enough for now. Now turn off solo to hear the keyboard split. Pad is a little soft relative to the bass, so let's turn up its layer volume. Last but not least, let's look at the sequencer section. There are four step sequencers with up to 128 steps each. It can be assigned to either the upper layer or lower layer, but not both. Let's go back to that epic patch we saved earlier. Now let's record some notes in the sequencer 1. Press next to advance steps. Use this button to enter rests. That's enough for now. I'm not going to use all 128 steps in this demo. Let's go ahead and play the sequence. Now let's record something into sequence 2. We can now play either or both sequences.
As you heard there, we can play the upper layer manually while the sequencer is on the lower layer. As mentioned, the sequencer cannot be used on both layers at once, but we can use the arpeggiator to get rhythmic patterns on the upper layer while using the sequencer on the lower layer. If that sounded a little bit out of sync, it's probably because it is. Let's set the sequencer, arpeggiator, and echoes to tempo sync mode. For the remainder of this video, we're going to look at a few more of the factory presets. We hope that you've enjoyed this detailed look at the Elka X. To find out more, please visit cherryaudio.com and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV. Yeah, probably should have made that a little more squelchy.